Well, we specialize in stereoscopic VR post-production, and we've been working on a number of projects. Uh, our most recent that we uh, completed were shots on Mr. Robot, and we did uh, some shots on, uh, well, actually we did all of the post on Valence Reef, which included a lot of stereo conversion. The, the VR market is obviously very new in this iteration. It's, VR's been around a long time, but there's never been a situation like this with the financing behind it, the uh, digital distribution channels, uh, the manufacturers getting involved, uh, trying to create a better experience for the end user. Uh, but the power of VR, which really drew me into it, was the emotional connection that it creates. And I think some of the most compelling content being created right now is very story-driven, very uh, human story-driven type content. Um, the more fun, thrill type content, you know, there's technical issues that people deal with motion sickness and things like that if it's not done right. So um, there's still a lot to be explored on the storytelling side. The gaming side, that's a whole different market. We're not really in that area. We're in the uh, native acquired VR content. Uh, and we feel that, you know, uh, there's a lot of potential for e-commerce, a lot of potential for definitely for educational uh, and instructional type content. Also in areas like real estate, it's a, it's a no brainer. That's something we're kind of looking into our business solutions as well as just entertainment solutions for VR. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of areas that still are left to be explored on a large scale. And that's the exciting part of it. Plus the exciting part is the content that you create may work well in a headset device, but because of the magic window and the players on YouTube and Facebook, you don't necessarily have to have it in a headset in order to enjoy it. You can watch it on your phone or your iPad or something like that, or your computer at home and still get a, a good experience from it and, and enjoy the experience. So it's kind of a unique beast that we've never seen before. You know, it, it has multiple platforms uh, that it can be distributed on and each one, each one of those platforms give you a different level of experience from the same source, you know, piece. First and foremost is probably the schedules. Um, producers are starting to learn that VR post is very difficult and it takes more time to do than traditional post. And, and it takes a quite a bit of convincing for them to allow enough time to do the job properly. The second is data wrangling. Uh, it's exponentially more data than anything you've ever worked on because, especially for us, we specialize in stereo. We have to finish everything in 4K. Uh, initially, we used to get source materials that was more like 1K, and then it went up to 2K, 3K. Now they're shooting 4K, and we're starting to be asked to deliver 6 and 8K finals. So the data, Data management is crucial uh, because, especially in stereo, you're dealing with eight cameras that are going to be at least 2K sources uh, that have to be stitched into a 4K uh, stereo pair. Well, primarily, uh, we, we've been using uh, Blackmagic Design Fusion for our main platform and also DaVinci for our, uh, our um, IO platform. Uh, we find the efficiencies. Uh, we gain with those programs is uh, outstrips any other solution out there. Plus, you know, the expend extendability with plugins, uh, they support OFX, so we have several OFX plugins that we use within the pipeline to help improve uh, the workflow in terms of color management and uh, uh, seam crossing fixes and things like that. Back to the issue of the data management and the data wrangling, we found it's critical that you have the ability to have everything as much as possible done within your compositing software uh, so you don't have to render out multiple passes per job because that just creates a, another data nightmare, especially on longer format shows where we're having takes that are one to two minutes long. Uh, it makes it, if you have to render out multiple passes, you can't deliver, you can't make your deliveries and you cannot have enough storage to store all that stuff. So, uh, so those basically are our main tools in our workflow. 
Yeah, because because uh, VR shot with you know the same uh, the same shot from basically in stereo, it's eight different camera angles uh, with eight different parallax. Uh, issues like lens flares become really challenging, um, and that's where tools like uh, Revision's uh, Rematch helps tremendously where we have to really rebuild lens flare data from one eye to the other. But not only that, it's not just from one eye to another, it's from one quadrant to another. So you have to have this ability to blend those flares across the seams in a, in a seamless way so, so it doesn't look like, you know, eight different cameras. And those tools have become indispensable at this point for us to be able to do that because I can't think of any other way to, to fix those types of issues. Uh, also, every camera, even camera matching and camera balancing is very challenging because still m much of the footage is being shot with cameras like GoPros. And e even some of the higher end systems don't have complete color uh, calibration within the camera. So we have to go through and match all the cameras. And even after we do that as best we can, in stereo, we still see discrepancies and we have to match it across from the left eye and the right eye. So for that, we use a rematch, which allows us to do a lot of automated uh, camera matching, which saves time, makes the quality better, uh, the product better, the experience better. And again, I can't think of another tool that can do that. So we've added that into our pipeline. Um, and uh, we are also now looking at uh, integrating some of the other tools from Revision, like Reflex, which uh, allows us to fix um, extreme parallax issues, especially crossing seam lines, in a very efficient way, much better than the built-in tools that you might find in the positing programs such as Nuke or, or Fusion or, or any of the other ones. Um, it has a few features that just uh, nobody else has that, that uh, really make it work and it's really fast. So when we're dealing with all these 4K renders and everything like that, it's important that we have speed because our deadlines are very tight and, and we have to have fast solutions to be able to make our deliveries. What we've been finding is, you know, budgets are tight in a lot of situations and people don't feel the need to have an onset VR supervisor. Uh, I think uh, that is a mistake because uh, there are a number of examples and, of shoots I've been on where everybody's working really hard to do their job, but nobody's noticing where the camera is pointing and where the seams are landing. And so you end up with footage where the seam is the least ideal place and it, it ends up costing a lot more money and time in post-production when all they had to do was turn the camera slightly it doesn't affect anything they're doing, but you, you kind of you really need somebody on set who can really point out when the camera is not pointing in the right direction, or if there's going to be an issue later on down the line. And uh, so we're trying to encourage clients to, to budget that person on set because it really is important for the for the budget on the post, the schedule on the post, and the ultimate quality of the final product. And it's very little money to spend that saves you a lot of money later. You know, in our internal discussions about content creation for it, we've, you know, we feel very strongly that um, it's got to be good content whether it's VR or not. VR is not going to make it better. If it sucks, it sucks. <laughs> uh, but... Is that a technical term? Yeah, it's a music term. Um, if it's not good content, it's not good content. Uh, VR is not going to make it better. The interesting thing is maybe is simultaneously producing uh, a VR piece along with um, uh, a piece that would go in normal content. We did this on the Muse video uh, we uh, worked with last year with our, with our client uh, Within. Um, they created a, uh, a center cut from one of the cameras, a full-on music video that premiered on YouTube and on the internet much before the VR version came out, but it all came from the same source material. So it, with proper planning, you can create content that goes to multiple platforms from a single shoot. And that's, that's something I think that you def definitely have to look into doing and, and creating and not just limiting yourself to say, oh, okay, 
uh, we're only going to shoot this in VR, but look at content that you can do in VR and more traditional outlets.